Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Alex Cuesta Daily Show. How are we all doing out there? I kind of sound like a robot. How aren't we all? How's everybody doing on this Friday, April 22nd of 2022? Before we get into the fun stuff, like, share, follow, subscribe, rate five stars on Spotify and iTunes, spread this word of mouth, and as always, social media, go search the Alex Cuesta Show, and you will find us anywhere there is social media. So look at me. Two days in a row, did the show with David yesterday on the Alex Cuesta show, doing the Alex Cuesta daily show today, found something I wanted to talk about. So there we go. And I know people that are listening to this that know me are like, dude, he never shuts the fuck up. How does he not have things to talk about? I just don't want to be, I guess, like everybody else and just kind of talk to talk. Um, I don't want to be redundant. I can say the same things over and over again, but I, I hated listening to shows that constantly said the same thing over and over again. So As I continue to go, I will continue to try and find more fun things to talk about. And I found one today. But before we get going into any of that, we are going to continue with our Biden COVID tracker two days in a row here. Look at that. So yesterday, the 21st, we were at 80,732,932 cases. As of today on the 22nd, we're up to 80,801,713 cases, an uptick of 68,781 cases nationwide. So there is an uptick there. It's not gigantic. It's not what the panic that people are making it out to be, Um, especially with the masks coming off on planes, even though New York City is still fucking stupid. You can at the moment you get out of New York uh, onto the airport and in the air, you could take your mask off and wherever else you go, you don't have to wear it. But if you're coming into New York, you can have your mask off the whole time. You have to put it on when you get into the airport. It is so asinine what's going on there. Let's jump into deaths. Deaths yesterday were at 989,331. As of today, they're at 990,208. That's an uptick of 887 deaths nationwide. So loss of life always sucks. It does. But 887 is a far cry from where it was. So again, we are dealing with an endemic that is not being called an endemic. They are continuing to call this a pandemic to continue to hold on to power. Joe Biden, I don't think that, man, hopefully he calls it an endemic before he gets to a million deaths here. That would be almost 600,000 deaths on his ledger alone. He's sitting around five, almost at 600,000 anyway. So he's done bad. He's done really bad. He continues to do bad. And not giving up power goes to show how bad he's doing because he's scared to give up power because this is kind of the one thing that him and the regime actually have control over. So that's going there. That is the Biden COVID tracker. Now, I don't have any real runner up stories today that I want to talk about. David and I touched on the Johnny Depp trial yesterday. We talked a little bit about Disney. I can mention quickly that CNN Plus, if you knew it was a thing, it was the streaming service for CNN. It is already closing after 32 days. That's sad for CNN, man. Discovery bought them, and you are going to see big changes at CNN, massive changes. Uh, Any personality, if you like a single personality there, or if you hate a personality there, they're going to be gone. I mean, Chris Wallace jump shipped at the wrong time from Fox News. He's going to be on CNBC or something on his own. And some of these dudes, I guarantee you'll find Don Lemon doing his own podcast. You'll find Brian Stelter possibly on Substack doing those types of things. So, you know. I guess it's not that big of a deal in the age of what we can do with podcasting, with what Substack does, with, you know, all the woke newspapers. Uh, these fools can find themselves places to land their feet. Um, Anderson Cooper will probably end up on a network somewhere. He's kind of like a guy that will go on, you know, what David Muir does on the international news or whatever the hell he does on Channel 7. I could see Anderson Cooper jumping onto one of those and doing something like that to compete with David Muir. But who knows? Who knows? But CNN is going to go down in a big way and it is going to be different and it would be for the better. I am rooting for Discovery to turn CNN into an objective news network again. Well, not again, but an objective news network. I am rooting for the day where we can find a network where we actively know that these people are fucking leftists, but they are at least trying to be objective. They are at least trying to give you the news as it is. They are only omitting some things from the story, not everything from the story that doesn't support their side. We, you know, we have known for years that the news is leftist. We have known this. This has not been a secret unless you are a Democrat and you're like, oh, it's not on the left. They were unfair to so-and-so in this article. 
you know, they cry that the media is unfair to Biden right now because they're a bunch of morons. But I root for the day that we can get something like that because Fox News isn't very good. They kind of suck outside of kind of Tucker. Uh, they're not great. And then you have CNBC, which is a absolute trash can and needs to go the way of CNN. CNN has been going down with all their allegations between Chris Cuomo and things like that. And it hasn't been great for them. So I hope Discovery does a nice big overhaul there. Now, I have to apologize before we continue going. I still have this throat tickle. So you might hear me cough. You might hear me and my voice go a little hoarse or whatever at a time. It's podcasting. If I have to cough, I'm going to cough. You're going to hear how shitty I sound if I have to do it. So, But we're going to jump into the main crux of the article. So it's an article I found on BleacherReport.com. I initially found it on Breitbart, but I really don't take Breitbart very seriously. I'm not going to lie. Breitbart to me is a very much a partisan website. Don't get me wrong. They have some good journalists, but I don't know. I don't, I don't find Breitbart majorly credible ever since Andrew Breitbart died. I think that's his name, Andrew Breitbart. Let me search. Let me be correct because he isn't, he was an influential person. Yeah. Andrew Breitbart. Ever since Andrew Breitbart um, died, that has not been the same. It has not been the same, um, you know, the same paper. So I don't take them as seriously. I'm not going to lie. And people might give me shit for that, but I really don't. So I moved on. Bleacher Report, I know wasn't great. Bleacher Report's woke. I get it. But I moved on to here. And if I go over to my little news guard guy here, my leftist news guard, it gives it a green shield with an 82.5 score. I never look at the full nutritional label. They call it nutritional label. What a bunch of weirdos. But nutritional label. So they give it a green uh, green shield there. So I'm going to read from this article, and it is about how Novak Djokovic, who has been absolutely fucking based when it's come to fighting the woke on some dumb shit, whether it is the vaccinations, which he still is battling against, and it, you know it is ultimately going to win that battle as everyone starts to realize that it is a it is an advanced treatment, it is not a vaccination, and COVID is ultimately inevitable. I don't blame anybody for wanting to get the advanced treatment, especially if you have comorbidities, you're advanced age, go get it. It might keep you out of the hospital. It might give you a more mild case, milder case, go get it. It ain't going to stop you from transmitting it. It ain't going to stop you from getting it. It doesn't do either of those things. So go get the really good advanced treatment. It's not a vaccine. And he's been fighting against it and he hasn't been able to play at some places. And he's spoken out. He's speaking out for a different reason now. Let's jump into this article. This article is by Adam Wells, was written yesterday on the 21st, again, from BleacherReport.com. Novak Djokovic says he cannot support Wimbledon banning Russian and Belarusian players. So, yeah, Wimbledon came out and banned Russian and Belarusian players. Now, the bizarre part about this is one of the people that they banned is Daniel Medvedev, who is the number two player on the planet. You banned the number two player on the planet from playing in the most prestigious tournament on the whole tour. Let's go with this article. Novak Djokovic has criticized Wimbledon's decision to ban players from Russia and Belarus from competing in the 2022 tournament amid Russia's ongoing invasion of Ukraine. So that's just factual. We're going to keep going. The Ongan Club announced on Wednesday that players from both countries won't be allowed to compete in this year's tournament. So, you know, we run into a crux here because All England Club is obviously an exclusive club. They're a country club. They can do whatever the fuck they want. We can be angry about it. We could disagree with it, but they host this Grand Slam. They host this game. They don't have to let anybody in their club that they don't want to. So we kind of run into that. Are they right for doing this? No, they are not. But can they do it, especially being an exclusive club? They sure can. They can. I'm pretty sure, you know, I don't know if they're similar to Augusta where you can't play there. Like everyone that plays in Augusta has to be a member in some sort of way. So you can't play on those uh, on a, in Augusta. You can't play in the Masters in golf unless you're a member of that country club. I don't know if the All England Club is the same way, but it could be. Let's keep going in the article. Djokovic called the decision crazy when speaking to reporters after defeating Laszlo Dejeri in the round of 16 at the Serbia Open. Here's a quote from uh, Joker. Quote, I know how much emotional trauma war leaves, he said. In Serbia, we all know what happened in 1999. In the Balkans, we have had many wars in recent history. However, I cannot support the decision of Wimbledon. I think it's crazy. So yeah, you're talking to a guy that grew up around war and he knows what it is and he knows war sucks. And here's a great quote coming from him. When politics interferes with sport, the result is not good. I couldn't have said any better myself. 
And we've seen it happen over and over and over and over. The NBA with the Black Lives Matter stuff, all all sports with Black Lives Matter, right? But with that, and then LGBTQ stuff going everywhere, and now all this Ukrainian shit going everywhere. And again, I will say this: I support Ukraine's victory in this war, but not for any other reason. I'm not a little Zelensky I running around going, "Yeah, Vladimir Zelensky's awesome." I'm not a person who is strong on. We just need to fight back those evil Russians because Putin is evil, and I'm not even. I'm not that guy. I am the person where Ukraine's a sovereign nation. Russia is a sovereign nation. No sovereign nation should invade another. The invading country should lose. That is my standpoint. I think it's a pretty sound standpoint from a um, a foreign policy. But that is the reasoning why I want Ukraine to win. It's pretty simple. But he is correct. Politics interfering with sport. The result is not good. Let's keep going with this. Djokovic isn't the only one to oppose the decision. The ATP and WTA, the governing bodies for men's and women's tennis, both released statements after a decision was made. Let's read their statements here. Discrimination based on nationality also constitutes a violation of our agreement with Wimbledon that states that player entry is based solely on ATP rankings. The ATP said, according to Reuters. So let's let's talk about here. If that's the case, ATP needs to pull their fucking players out. They need to tell that their players, you will be hit if this occurs. We do not sanction any player that is a member of the ATP competing in Wimbledon this year. That's what should happen. If you actually support this, if you're going to put your money where your mouth is ATP, then you need to tell the players, do not play in this tournament. This is not correct. This is not allowed. This is against our policy that we have in place with Wimbledon. So we will not be playing that tournament this year. Hit Wimbledon where it hurts. They want the money. They want the TV on them. They want people to see their pristine grass court. They want that giant fucking pan that people get, whatever it is, that, that, that their trophy. They want that held up. They want those moments. That's huge every single year. They need to pull their players and say, unless Wimbledon retracts their statement and the All England Club allows all ATP members in good standing to play, then we will not allow our players to play there. That's what should happen. Let's keep going. The WTA said it is very disappointed by the decision. Individual athletes should not be penalized or prevented from competing due to where they are from or the decisions made by the governments of their countries. Discrimination and the decision to focus on such discrimination against athletes competing on their own as individuals is neither fair nor justified. Bravo for that statement. Because it's true. Now, you know, it's different. I guess if you're banning like the men's soccer team or women's soccer team or any of the Olympic athletes because they're wearing the Russian shield and they're representing that country. And I guess I still don't, I still am not a fan of that because they're athletes. They have nothing to do with the fucking government, but especially if it is an athlete competing in their sport here, like tennis, which is an individual sport, they're not competing for Russia. Daniil Medvedev is not competing for Russia. Victoria Azarenka is not competing for Russia. None of them are. They are competing for themselves. They're trying to win their own selves. They're trying to create their own legacy, add on their own legacy. So this is terrible what's going on. Let's keep going. According to Reuters, this marks the first time players have been banned for competing at Wimbledon on the grounds of nationality since, uh, excuse me, I got a cough here. (laughs) Oh. Uh, You heard it. That cough sucks. Just a stupid tickle. I'm not sick. Let's start over again. According to Reuters, this marks the first time players have been banned for competing at Wimbledon on the grounds of nationality since Japanese and German players were barred in the immediate aftermath of World War II, which if I was alive then, again, World War II, maybe I wouldn't have a different opinion because I was not around during World War II. Where I stand now in 2022, that was the wrong decision then. Japanese and German players had nothing to do with wars unless they were conscripted and they fought there or unless they were, you know, even if here's the thing, even if they were out and out fucking Nazis or out and out imperialists from Japan, that's not your sports problem. Individual philosophy, individual ideology has nothing to do with their play on the court, period, unless they're breaking a law, unless they're breaking a law, then you can do what you want to do. If they just have an ideology, could be hateful, could be, you know, people could hate it mentally. It could make them sad. It could make them angry. Kick rocks. They have the right to believe it. Could it be fucked up? Yes. You know, I believe leftists are wrong for being racist. 
They are all a bunch of racists with their segregationist policies. Do they have the right to believe in them? Yes, they have the right to be segregationist Marxists. They do. Are they right? No. Do they do they should they win? No, we should beat them back. But they have the right. They have the right. Let's keep going. Alina Svetlana, who is from Ukraine, told BBC Radio 5 Live Breakfast, Five Live Breakfast, that Russian and Belarus players should be allowed to play if they speak up and denounce the Russian government. Quote, if players don't speak out against the Russian government, then it is the right thing to ban them, she said. So she's an idiot. I get it. She's probably emotional. Well, she's a moron. What why should these players have to speak out against it? What are what difference is it going to make them saying anything about Vladimir Putin besides putting themselves and their families' lives in danger? If we all believe that Putin is as crazy as we think he is and as much of a brutal dictator as he thinks he is, why would any of these people do anything like that to put themselves or their families at risk? Why? You're asking them to do that. And you think that these people are happy that this is going on? Maybe some of them believe in it. Maybe they do. Maybe, you know, they were raised and they hate Ukraine and the Ukraine's had this coming to them. Maybe, maybe that's what they believe. But I think a lot of them are just as annoyed by it as we all. I think there's a lot of Russian citizens that are like, fuck, why are we at a war with Ukraine right now? We don't need this. We have bread lines. We, we, half of our people can't eat. We're really hurting economically. What the fuck? End this. And, you know, and I, they might be embarrassed by the war. Just in the way a lot of people in America are embarrassed by the things the leftists have done in the past. We're embarrassed by internment camps. We're embarrassed by the tra- trail of tears. We're embarrassed by slavery. We're embarrassed by segregation. We're embarrassed by fighting against women's rights. We're embarrassed by fighting against civil rights. All things the left has done. All things that people on the left and the Democrat Party has done. We're embarrassed by the left. But that doesn't mean that we need to, you know, I do denounce them, but it doesn't mean that denouncing them should be the basis of anything. So yeah, no, she's wrong. So let's go. They go on a, on a list of the players that can't compete. I talked about Daniel Medvedev, the number two player, um, Andre Rublev, Karen Kachanov, Aslan Karatsev, Ilya Ivashka, Anastasia. Oh my God. Bob Pavla Chenkova, Daria Katakina, Veronica Kudermatova, Ariana Sabalenka and Victoria Azarenka are among the notable players who won't be able to play at Wimbledon. Wow, that was tough. I hope I didn't put you their names too bad. And then they give us a little blurb here at the end about the war. Russian military, Russia's military invasion of Ukraine began on the February 24th. The United Nation has confirmed that that uh, 2,345 civilian deaths and 2,919 injuries since the start of the invasion. Death toll is likely higher because of the delay in reporting per CNBC's Amanda Masias. And there's the article. So here's the thing. And I agree with Novak Djokovic wholeheartedly. He has been spot on with a lot of stuff. What we need to realize is what's going on here. What the All England Club is doing is they are following in the wokeism way. They are virtue signaling by doing this, that... We do not support the war. We do not support Russia. We support Ukraine and we stand with them. Because of that, we're going to penalize people who have nothing to do with it. It's a virtue signal. And if you want to find out more about why corporations do this, I recommend going to read Woke Inc. by Vivek Ramaswamy. He's a young man. How old is Vivek? Vivek is young. Let's see. Vivek Ramaswamy. He is a young man still. Uh, He's 36 now. He was an extremely young man that was in the big hedge fund area when he got in there. You could read about how young he was in his quest. I read the book. It was a great book. And he talks about why companies do this woke bullshit and how his own experience with the signaling that companies do to make themselves look good and how they don't actually mean any of it. This is virtue signaling. This is being on the woke. This is your neighbors all of a sudden putting up a Ukrainian flag and supporting Ukraine. This is them taking down their Black Lives Matter flag to put up the Ukrainian flag or their Black Lives Matter sign to put up the new one or the LGBTQ or the love is love or hate doesn't belong here or whatever it is. This is the virtue signaling, the wokeism that has been going on. And it's on every level. And it's because they're trying to score points with the people that don't give a shit about them nothing that goes on here is going to help the Ukrainian military win. It is not going to hurt the Russian military. It's not going to affect Vladimir Zelensky and what he's doing in Ukraine. It's not going to affect Vladimir Putin and what he's trying to do from Russia to Ukraine. It's not going to stop or do anything besides hurt individual people that are just trying to make a living and play the sport 
that they play for a profession. So it's wrong. The All England Club is wrong. Again, it's a little bit choppy waters with them because they are an exclusive club. So they can quite literally do whatever the fuck they want. But the ATP needs to put their money where their mouth is. They should tell their players, do not play here. If they want to discriminate against your peers, do not play. (laughs) Yeah, that cough is killing me. But overall, this is what you get with the All-England Club. And I support Novak Djokovic and what he said. I supported him with not getting the vaccination. It was his choice not to get it. And it was wrong when he was held out. It was wrong when he was held out. So I hope there could be a resolution here. I hope the All England Club gets enough pressure to reverse this asinine decision because the signaling does no good and this doesn't help anybody in Ukraine or in that war effort. All right, everybody, I want to thank you for listening. I know this was a short and sweet episode, but short and sweet is the way I like it sometimes, especially when my voice and my cough is acting up and being annoying. So if you like what you heard, like, share, follow, subscribe, rate five stars. If you're listening on Spotify and iTunes, spread this word of mouth. And as always on the socials, go search for the Alex Cuesta show. So once again, everybody have a good uh, Friday and yeah, it's not good Friday, not that Friday, but have a good Friday and have a good weekend. And hopefully I'll be back Monday. Let me find something to talk about. And if you have something to talk about, you think I should send it to me. We'll talk about it. Maybe. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for listening. Have a good one.